Good day, fellow YouTubers. We are now going to replace on our 2006 Scion XB fuel pump. As you can see, we're at 190,000. I don't want to risk that fuel pump going on me. Still original. Gas gauge all the way down the bottom, so that way I don't have too much of a mess with oil, uh, with gas coming out. These are my related parts. Got my filter sock, the fuel pump O-ring gasket on top of the plate, fuel pump, and our regulator, the main heart of the fuel delivery system. And I'll guide you through the removal and installation process. And also, a pretty humid day, almost 70%. So that way, air's not too dry, no risk for combustible ignition with the air being too dry so air is pretty good for 70% ain't bad okay first thing first I'm gonna disconnect our little fuse access panel here that comes out and according to our service manual we're going to disconnect that O, that C O P N fuel relay right about there. You'll see it. So we got to remove that circuit opening relay. We start the engine until there's no more fuel inside our engine. That way we depressurize the whole fuel system. So we look up in there, and it's that right blue relay right above the 30 amp purple on the right so we're removing this baby right here all right that's out right next to the big gray relay disconnect it now we'll start our engine even though she's really running on fumes all right, of course our good old stick shift. Start our engine until she dies. And there it is. Wait a couple of seconds to confirm that the engine will not start. We'll try to pressurize everything. Give it about a good two or three seconds crank. Okay, that's it. Fuel depressurized according to the service manual. We're gonna open up our fuel tank door. We're gonna relieve any air according to the service manual. Air's escaped, all right. Close our door. We shut off our ignition and then we'll disconnect our negative battery terminal. Once we disconnect the negative battery terminal, we're going to we're going to install back the relay. Alright. I'm gonna disconnect negative terminal. Okay, negative terminal is out, move that out of the way, no connection, then we go over here, and we'll connect our blue relay, so once we have the pump installed, we'll prime it, about a good two or three minutes, make sure she's well primed. And then she'll have no startup problems with the new pump. Okay, back installed. All right, it's in access to our fuel pump. Got to remove the bottom seat. I already took the liberty ahead of time 
to clean everything else so that way we waste too much time in this video but usually you just push down hard this is for 2006 maybe 2005 is a little different see i got everything prepared my rags two flat heads with the tape around the edges that way you don't damage the connectors on the fuel pump assembly all our simple tools here a little tray to put in the pump and our instructions right there in the middle so push right in with your knees one at a time to disengage and then engage it down and once you engage it disengage right up at the same time and while pushing it in that way so I'll disengage from the bottom then you disconnect this over here use the key from your side ignition push down over here releases and we push down the rest of our buckles Outside for now, got a working space. All right, As you can see over here, pretty much cleaned it out. It's out of the way. Lift this up. There's our fuel pump axis. We managed to put this in so that way it won't fit back on you. Yeah? Take off of this. That's to protect the wiring. Harness. Put that aside. Over here, I already managed to took this, take this off already before. But it's hold on by some special tacky cement. Just pry it off nice and easy with a flat blade. You can see there's the black thing right there. Put that to the side, and as you can see right here, I managed to clean it up really nice. Very important, so no flooring. Contaminant, dust, rust flakes, whatever, go inside to the fuel tank. Make it absolutely clean. All right. We want to disconnect. This guy right here. So we're gonna use a little screwdriver to help out. Little by little, just get the screwdriver right in back of the yellow tab, locking tab, and just pull it out little by little until she comes out. As you can see, she's almost out. Just keep on removing it. And she'll actually come right out. Okay. Put this on the side right here. All right, we're gonna disconnect this electrical harness connector. We press in the tab. This giant tab right here, press it in. And pull it out. Set this to the side. All right, we got the yellow clip out. We're gonna try to pull this baby out. for any spray, which I hope not. No spray. So we're good. Okay. Put that to the side. Okay, next, we got that off, we got that off, we're gonna remove the bolts. 
Remember the same applied force you did for removing these bolts will be the same pressure amount of force to tighten back up. Don't we'll over torque these guys. I think it only calls for 31 inch pounds more or less. I'll give you the specs later on. So I'm using a quarter and just a little bit removal force. Didn't even take that much. So we're going to remove all these. Right now I'm just going to crack open then I'll lose, take them out. Okay. You can see all the eight bolts are removed and there are tiny little bolts. Thank God they're not rusted, but 31 inch pounds was called for, so not very little much tightening force on these babies so you don't snap them. All right, next step is to remove this evaporator tube. So we're going to pinch over here and pull. All right, that tube was a major pain. I had to use locking grips vise to keep holding this to unlock it, while at the same time using adjustable. And while this is holding and lock, I was holding the base and then pulling this baby out little by little. According to the uh, service manual, you're not supposed to use any tools, but she was on there, so I managed to Got it out. All right, once I got this off, next step is to remove this plate, which I give it a nice, I just hold the main fuel pump housing here and slowly pry off this metal set plate. As you can see, it's already out. There's your index where you line it up. So we remove this baby, put it to the side. I clean it out afterwards, so that way be nice and clean. Got a... All right. Remove the fuel pump. Nice and easy. Without damaging the fuel pump. Sending unit lever. Okay, from this side, all right. So I'm gonna have to tilt it more, there you go. Yeah. We still got some fuel in there, we know she's right on the E line. Okay. Next step, invert it upside down. We want to disconnect this top base here, which is secured by one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to use a screwdriver, little by little, pry it out, and then remove this whole thing. To use a screwdriver, wrap with tape, so that way you don't break off, I imagine, these tabs, and then you slowly just pry it off little by little. Right. Okay, as you can see, I already removed the five tabs. Be very, very careful. It looks like this thing got aging plastic. It might snap. Take your time taking it off. She'll spring right out. Next step is to remove this rubber cushion according to the service manual. Put that to the side. Even though I guess it's pretty, I 
a replacement rubber cushion, so it should be good. All right. Okay, next step is to remove the fuel gauge center assembly. So looking inside here, there's a tab down here. All you gotta do is press down on that tab and at the same time, you're gonna slide down this fuel center gauge unit. So press down this tab with thin blade screwdriver. Once you got that tab pressed down, you're gonna push this baby. It slides off. And there's that sliding mechanism to put it back in. Just line up with the holes in there and then locks in place. We'll depress this tab, which I already depressed it. And we take off our connector. We'll put this to the side. Wait, wait. Next step, it says disconnect the fuel pump connector, but I don't know if it's this one, this one, but after that, we're going to disengage these four tabs to remove this top part. And we'll be able to disconnect one of the connectors. So same principle. Slowly engage it. Okay, managed to took, take off the upper half of this housing, but it was difficult because of this O-ring right here. So I pried it off nice and very easy so I don't break off these thin tabs over here. As you can see, they're very thin right here. So I broke it off nice and easy all the way around and I gave it a nice little help with the thin blade screwdriver pushing up little by little and I finally broke it off and that's the resulting culprit because of this O-ring. I'm gonna to try to take this O-ring out of here and then place it right in here for ease of installation. So that way it's nice and centered once we put it in. All right, managed to pull off the fuel pump from this. It was a clean major effort because of this guy right here. So I had to use pliers and slowly twist it off little by little and pulling it out, finally managed to pull it right off. Go to this baby right here strong suction seal on that rubber sealable o-ring right there so i'm going to compare this with my replacement and we'll take it from there okay this is my replacement pump long some little thing now this one from the original how to slowly twist it off and use a nice thick Blade screwdriver with the tape to protect the O-ring, even though it comes with a new O-ring for the pump. It's in there, new O-ring. I managed to slowly work our way around, prying off this plastic look like washer that goes inside seated in the pump. So I managed to got that off with that little by little prying all the way around, remove. There's the old O-ring and there's the pushing spacer. That goes with that old pump. So I'm gonna put everything exactly like it is. It goes in there like that. I'll get the new O-ring, put it in here, and then that thing on top of that. All right, everything looks good. This is the new replacement pump. Put the collar bushing in there. New rubber O-ring, and this special type of grease used for plumbing rubber seal so it won't leak water and all that stuff, especially for liquid, so I just put a small amount so that way easier removal for in the future, which I doubt, it costs probably last me another, God willing, another 190,000 or 200. All right, so now we're lubed, well lubed right there and also I put a good amount on this one as well, so that way ease of removal when we separate that housing on top. All right, I use one of these very thin bladed screwdrivers to pop open this clip. So I worked it around, little by little prying it off. We got it off. I decided to reuse the OEM original filter. This filter, I don't kind of like that much. Looks like it's very less square area. I got more filtration over here compared to the uh, aftermarket one, so I'm gonna stick with the original. Original looking not bad. I don't see no clogs or anything, so she's in good shape. 
That way I get more filter area compared to the aftermarket. Okay, I decided to reuse the old clip. This one's a little bit too big and it might interfere with this OEM filter strainer. So I use five millimeter. Set it right in there and hammer it nice and in, little by little seat it. And she's fully seated nice, nice and locked in and going nowhere. All right. And of course I use this little screwdriver to remove the uh, old clip. Now it's just all of uh, putting it back together again. Oh, and one more thing, I bought a new regulator since the original looks like it's working great, but I ain't gonna take no chances since so I took this baby apart. I'm gonna put in also a new regulator, same deal applies. I'm gonna put a nice thin coating of grease there so that way easier to remove for next time. All right, got this installed right here. Plastic washer right there with the rubber O-ring. Put this in here, also new regulators installed. Light, very light coat of grease according to the service manual. I'm gonna insert this baby in. And voila. Slight little twist, work out that nice O-ring. Okay, we're in. Let's see what we got for the next page. I'm gonna install the harness, which is that top thing, and attach all the connectors, which is this baby, along with the new, put the new O-ring in there. It's gonna slide right in with that one, and then we'll do our connections, and then snap all the connectors in place. And of course, connect our fuel pump harness. Let me sit over here. We're gonna connect and snap everything in place. Okay, got it in there, nice and snapped in place. Next, we're gonna put the fuel gauge sender in the slider right in like before. There's the tab right there. Line up with the square, slide it up, and she likes in place. And then we'll connect it with the connector. So line it up. And she's locked. Take this. Connect over here. And we're locked. Okay, we're nice and good, solid, and going nowhere. All right, new rubber bottom cushion. I'm gonna install it. Okay. That's that. And then, last but not least, this baby and support it back inside. And so it lines up right here and snap all in place. As you can see the big difference with the aftermarket, I put it on there and there's no way it's gonna fit this pump cover right here with this new aftermarket rubber cushioning for the fuel pump. So I'm gonna have to reuse the original and hopefully it won't interfere with the fuel pump delivery. We'll find out once everything is all set and installed. Everything is perfectly in reverse order procedure. Nothing is missing, so I'm gonna snap this baby in. Oh yeah. Okay. Looks like everything is all in. Now we're gonna put this back into the vehicle and connect all our tubes, connections. I got my new O-ring that goes underneath here. This is the original. Looks like in not bad shape. I'll compare it with the new one and I'll decide if I'll use the new one or the original. But most likely I'll use the new one. All right, I'm gonna put a small amount of anti-seize. Because we 
broke the original seal. That way I don't have risk of snapping these bolts, even though I'm not gonna tighten them that tight. It says 31 inch pounds, so that's the most gonna get. All right, decided to go with the new O-ring. Slide it right in there. And put it right inside the top. Right. Got my little steel wire brush. I'm just gonna clean off the loose excess rust so that way better removal for next time that way she won't get caked up be difficult to remove get prepped up nice Same thing with the mating surface all the way around Shaking up the loose rust. Yeah. Also, I noticed on the new O ring there are white indexes at 12 and 6 o'clock. I looked underneath and there's mounting plate, and there's also white at 12 o'clock. So I try to match it as close as I can. As you can see, there's the main index right here to put on the filter housing, and the white is pretty much lines up with that. So I don't know why they put the index there, but we'll do what it makes it look nice. Okay, we're slowly putting in this little by little without bending the fuel gauge unit. And she is right on top. Alright. Try to get this much lined up with the original hose routing right there. Thing. No loose contaminant dirts, no thing. All right, we're gonna put our plate. Line it up right there. And we're gonna put our bolts with the anti seeds. All right, as you can see, I'm putting just a light coating of anti seeds. And I'm hand thread. She threads in nice. Okay, and last one. Little coating. Hand thread it right in there. Okay. Alright, got the evaporative tube connected in there nice and firmly connected. Now I'm gonna slowly crisscross all these babies. Evenly torque throughout the whole plate. Just want a crisscross pattern, a couple of turns. So we get it nice and snug. Remember the last time the amount of force you took to take apart these screws with we'll the same amount of force, more or less ballpark. These screws are similar, more or less, to the water pump screws already replaced a long time ago, and it's same deal, crisscross all the way around. Once you get it nice and pretty snug, then work about three or four times around until you get it just tight and use 
Adjust your finger strength for 31 inch pounds. All right, I'm gonna install this fuel delivery hose to the injectors to the engine and secure it with our Y clip. Yeah. All right, we got our fuel connector connected. Clip is nice and strong. Pull the tightness and going out. And our last connection for current to the fuel pump. And she's in. We got a click. And put this here. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave this off. I got the connector already connected. So now I'm going to connect the battery to negative positive terminal. I mean, a negative turn to the terminal. I'm going to turn the ignition to run. And we should hear the fuel pump coming in there and pressurize the whole system and make sure no leaks. All right, we're connecting our negative terminal. We took advantage and clean it up a little bit with the wire brush, so we're good. Okay, the moment of truth. We're gonna turn on ignition only. Verify. for a minute or two. All right, we have fuel, started the car. I primed up the the pump for a minute and a half to two minutes. Make sure she's fully pressurized. I'm gonna check again for leaks. And we're running sweet. There is no leaks. We got good small little hum. Installation success. Good for another 200,000 miles, give or take. If the aftermarket good quality construction. All the bolts are nice and tight, finger tight, not too much, all handy seized. Put this cover back on, install everything, and that's that. Hope this installation will help all you Cyan bread box lovers out there. Since this is the first official vision video of fuel pump replacement. Enjoy your bread box and more videos yet to come maybe. Peace. Okay, did a nice test drive. And I don't know if YouTubers can hear this, but we got that nice. I remember when I bought this car brand new, got that nice electrical hum from the fuel pump. And over the years, looks like it slowly died out. So I guess it's a good time to replace that fuel pump, which is 190000 Now I got that nice humming sound from the fuel pump. So that fuel pump is nice and charged up with high PSI sound. Sounds like she got a nice good pressure and power from that fuel pump. I don't know if you guys remember when you bought your bread box brand new, got that nice little humming sound. That's more exhaust leak, but it's definitely a difference there was no hum before on my old pump. Now I got that nice electrical motor hum from that fuel pump. So it's a good sign. I remember when I bought it brand new, I had that same electrical hum noise. So installation success. And full wide open throttle. She 
We did the man. She's good. Until next time, YouTubers.